be like him. 1 John 2 verse 6. He that saith he abideth in him ought himself also so to walk even as he walked. Do we want to live the victorious Christian life? I'm sure we do. And this is really one of the keys to that. It's how we are to walk even as he walked. It's been said that the best sermon is the sermon that is fullest of Christ. And you could say, likewise, the best Christian is the one who is fullest of Christ, filled with Christ. And Paul prays in Ephesians 3 verse 19 that we might be filled with all the fullness of God. In the Word it says that of Christ in Colossians 2 verse 3, in whom are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. It's Christ. Christ is all. Christ in us. Christ in whom are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. And we are so to walk even as He walked. Christ is our model, our source, our help. But do we stop as we go through life's busy journey sometimes? Do we take time to stop and think of that? To stop and ask ourselves, as that popular slogan goes, what would Jesus do? What would Jesus do in the situations that face me in my life? How can I be more like Him? How can I live more like Him? How can I think more like Him? How can I act more like Him? How can we walk even as He walked? How can we be truly Christ-like? Christ-like. The wife of missionary Adoniram Judson told him that a newspaper article one day said that they compared him to the Apostle Paul. They compared him, they likened him to one of the apostles. And Judson replied, he said, I do not want to be like Paul or any mere man. I want to be like Christ. I want to follow Him only, copy His teachings, drink in His Spirit and place my feet in His footprints. Oh, to be more like Christ. Oh, to be more like Christ. That was Judson's prayer. To be like Him. To be Christ-like. And we need a biblical role model. That model for our lives that is patterned after Him, our Saviour, our Master. To pattern our lives after Christ, our Lord. To seek after Him. To be like Him. And to obey Him as He says, Learn of me. Learn of me. Think of some of the ways that you can be like Him. That you can be like Him. Pray like Jesus prays. To learn to pray like Jesus prays. How did our Lord Jesus pray? He was a man of prayer. He was a man given to prayer. He often went to pray, we read. He prayed early. He prayed privately. He prayed publicly. He prayed corporately. He prayed for his enemies. He prayed for his people. He prayed for his friends. He prayed for children. He prayed with praise. He prayed with thanksgiving. He prayed over meals. He prayed earnestly. He fell with his face to the ground and prayed in Gethsemane. He prayed in faith. He prayed for guidance. He prayed for the Father's will. He prayed unselfishly. And he prayed with his dying breath, he prayed. Pray like Jesus prayed. How can we pray like Jesus prays? I pray that we can. Worship like Jesus worships. Do church like Jesus would do church. It says of him in Luke 4.16, He came to Nazareth where he had been brought up and as his custom was, as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. It was his practice. It was his custom. It was his habit to be where the people of God were, to worship together with God's people. How we need to pray like Jesus prays and worship like Jesus worships. To be like Jesus. To have the habit, to have the custom of being in fellowship. Of spending time with other believers. Of relying on His divine energy and empowerment. Pray like Jesus prays. Secondly, love like Jesus loves. 
Love like Jesus loves. In John 11.36, the context there is of Lazarus' death. And Jesus wept. And they said, Behold how He loved Him. Behold how He loved Him. They could see that Jesus loved Lazarus. If only we could truly learn to love like Jesus loves. What a difference it could make. What a difference it could make to our lives to love like Jesus loves. How many church conflicts could be ironed out if we had love like Jesus loves? If we love as He would love. How many marriage problems could be sorted out if we had love like Jesus loved? How many hurts could be healed if we had love like Jesus' love? If we would learn to love like Jesus loves, then we would learn to care like Jesus cares. We would learn to forgive like Jesus forgives. We would learn to give like Jesus gives. In Matthew 14, and from verse 18, we read the account of the feeding of the multitude of one of those accounts. And the Lord Jesus, He says, Bring them hither to Me. He talks to the people in the context. The disciples had said, Look, it's getting too hard. It's getting too dark. Uh, uh, the crowd's too big. We've got to send them home. We're running out of uh, time and food. and We've just got to send them home to go and get something to eat. And He says, Bring them here to Me. And in verse 19 of 14 of Matthew, And he commanded the multitude to sit down on the grass and took the five loaves and the two fishes and looking up to heaven he blessed and prayed and gave the loaves to the disciples and the disciples to the multitude. And they did all eat and were filled and they took up of the fragments that remained twelve baskets full. And they that had eaten were about 5,000 men, beside women and children. Care like Jesus cares. You know, sometimes in the practical sense too, we've got to care. That's why as a church we do care of our sister churches that are going through these times of testing. We thank God for the generosity of God's people that we've been able to minister to these saints in other places because we want to care like Jesus cares. We want to love like Jesus loves. We want to be like Jesus. And we want to learn of Him and think like Jesus thinks. Not like the disciples at the time. They said it's all just too hard. We don't have the budget. You know, the treasurer is looking at the books. Or, you know, there wasn't the money in the kitty. There wasn't the resources to hand of man's making. But Jesus cared for the multitude. And He says, bring them to Me. Bring them to Me. And how we need to care like Jesus cares to be sensitive to other people's needs. You know, we all can be insensitive. You know, ask my wife. <laughs> you know, we can all be insensitive. Amen. We need to be learning to be more sensitive, to be more caring, to be more compassionate, to be more like Jesus would be. Our Lord, how was He? He cared about those that the society of the day, they'd written off. They'd written them off, the widows, the outcasts, the tax collectors, the children of the time. There's references here we could see of how they were disregarded, discounted, turned away. But he says, bring them to me. Bring the children to me that I might bless them. He is the shepherd who holds the lambs. He's the shepherd who goes and searches out for that straying one. We need to love like Jesus loves. We need to serve like Jesus serves. To be like Him. To be like Him. In John 13, that familiar passage of the, the closing chapter of His life. In the upper room of His disciples gathered. And verse 4 of 13 of John. He riseth from supper and laid aside His garments. And took a towel. Just a common towel of a servant. And girded Himself. After that He poureth water into the basin. And began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel wherewith he was girded. And verse 1 of John 13, it says, Having loved his own which were in the world, he loved them, he loved them unto the end. What love, what love, what service, what servanthood that he would stoop, that he would bow, that he would gird himself as a servant, as a common slave. And bow down to filthy feet 
a common task, a menial task, the lowest of the low of tasks. It shows how he treated people, doesn't it? It shows how he loved people and how he served people. Let's learn of him. Learn of me, he says. Learn how we can serve like Jesus serves. How he treated people. And these disciples, they were not the easiest bunch to love. As we know at the time, some were arguing that there was a bit of a pecking order going on. There was a bit of infighting, a bit of, you know, people trying to vie for position about who would be the greatest. One of them would deny him. One of them would betray him. And the other ten would desert him. These are they that he bowed down and he Wash their filthy feet. How we need to serve like Jesus serves. Look for the opportunities that you can find where you can serve like Jesus serves. You know, there's some folk here with practical ideas. There's, there's a couple in this church who've got knowledge of making budgets for people. And they've said that they're willing to help those that need help to learn a budget how they can learn how to budget their money. That's serving what Jesus would serve. There's the, the youth group people here. They need someone else for this next Saturday night. They're serving what Jesus serves. They're reaching those that, uh, and I know from practical experience and from watching the last time, the one who gets up and talks to these youngsters has got to have nerves of steel and thick skin because they, they're often not listened to respectfully because these youngsters that we're ministering and seeking to minister to they're not always receptive to the gospel but how they need it how they need Christ Amen. how they need the word and how we must give it to them how we must care for them friends practical things that you can do there's someone in this church who wants to start a play group for young women in this area young women in this church young women that we can reach out to and touch for Jesus to serve like Jesus serves. That's practical. That's real life. That's grassroots. That's serving like Jesus served. To bless others to do right. To serve. Like Tabitha in Acts 9. She was full of good works. Full of good works. 1 Timothy 6 verse 18. Paul urges Timothy to be rich in good works. Ephesians 2 it says, for by grace are you saved through faith and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship. We are his workmanship. We are that which is crafted and made, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Let us serve like Jesus serves. Now there was, a, there was a chap this morning, he had about a minute to get ready to give the, the communion message this morning, and what a wonderful job he did unto the Lord. You know, that's serving like Jesus serves. He could have said, oh, I'm not ready. I haven't got my notes. I'm not prepared. He could have made some reason, and, and justifiably so, that he was put on the spot, but he served like Jesus served. And how God used him this morning. Amen. Because he was willing to serve like Jesus serves. You know, sometimes there's opportunity to do something for God, but we'll find an excuse. We'll find a reason why not. We'll find a reason why not. Instead of, I would love to serve. I would love to serve. I would love to step in and be standing in the gap and filling that need and meeting that need. Because I want God to use me. I want to be available. I want to be used of Him. To be serving like Jesus served. To display His attitude, His humility, His responsiveness, His willingness. And to do it all to the glory of God as we must. To do it all to that end. And to be as Him of whom it says He made Himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of man, and being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself, and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. That's who we should serve like, that servant of servants, that deacon of deacons, that man of man. 
That God of gods, the one and only God, our Lord Jesus Christ. Let's serve like Jesus serves. Let's reach out like Jesus reaches out. As we see in John 4, the account of Christ and the woman at the well, of how he reached out in loving and gentle ways to this woman at the well, this sinful woman, this godless woman, this Samaritan woman, the despised woman at the well. He ministered to her in John 4. We know that account of how he says that she's just come for water, but he says, I have come that you might have life. I, I, I am the living water, and, and, uh, and so on. Do we witness like Jesus would witness? David Brainerd, the missionary to the Americas, said, I care not where I live or what hardship I go through so that I can but gain souls for Christ. I care not what, where I live or what hardships I go through so that I can but gain souls to Christ. He said, while I'm asleep, I dream of these things. As soon as I awake, the first thing that is on my mind is this great work. All my desire is the conversion of sinners and all my hope is in God. Reach out like Jesus reaches out. God wants His people to communicate, to open their mouths, wherever it be. Invite people to Christ. Invite people to that relationship. Introduce people to the Lord Jesus Christ. Be unashamed. Be mobilised. Church of God, you are His feet. You are His hands. You are His lips. Is there not a cause? There is a cause. It's the cause that we all are to be about. Here, there, we're everywhere. Where we can, whenever we can. As God gives opportunity, open your mouth and be a witness for Christ. Be about the business of winning souls, of pulling men out of the fire. Pulling them out of the fire. Hating that garment that's spotted by the flesh. Pulling them out of the fire. What a picture of late in disasters, of fires and whatnot. Imagine someone in the fire, you want to pull them out. It's a work of rescue, isn't it? That's the picture that Christ paints for us of soul winning. And he made it his business. When they were searching for him, he said, How is it that you sought me? Didn't you know that I must be about my father's business? We must be about the father's business. We must be about God's business. And what did Christ do when he opened his mouth to preach in Matthew 4.17? From that time Jesus began to preach and to say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. He lovingly exhorted the woman at the well in that private witnessing, but in the public witnessing he was forthright and bold in the call to repenting. Reach out like Jesus reached out. You know, there's folk in our fellowship that go witnessing down Rundle Mall and they lift up their voice like a trumpet and they declare the gospel, they declare the truth, they're not shy about coming forward about the name of Jesus and of His saving grace and of the blood that was shed for sinners to be saved. There's time for that. And then there's time for the John 4, sitting down, hand in hand, face to face, one to one. Reach out like Jesus reaches out. And Matthew 9, it says, When he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion on them, because they fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep, having no shepherd. Will we have a heart like Jesus' heart? Will we have a heart like Jesus has? When he saw the multitude, he was moved with compassion on them. Paul says in Romans 9, I have great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart. As he was interceding, as he was prayerful for his nation, for his people, he says, I have great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart. He had the heart of Jesus. He had the heart of the Lord Jesus as he had that heaviness and that sorrow in his heart. We've heard about weeping today. How true. How true. Ask the Lord to open our eyes to see people like Jesus would see them. You know, as it were, to, to, to stand on the hillside and look at this place. To look at this community. To look at this people and to have a love, 
a compassion that moves us to action, to consider the lost souls as Jesus did, because we should weep like Jesus weeps. Weep like Jesus weeps. John 11.35, this is the one that's not too hard to memorise. John 11.35, Jesus wept. You can learn that memory verse today. Jesus wept. You can do that, brother Ian. <laughs> Jesus wept. And when he was come to the city, uh, he beheld the city and he wept over it. In Luke 19, 41. He wept at Lazarus' grave side and then we know he called him forth to life again. The power of his name. The power of his person. But he wept like a human being. He felt the pity. He felt the loss. He felt the sorrow. He felt the tragedy. He felt the... The common sense of loss in the people there at his friend's passing. Weep like Jesus weeps. And as he looks at the city in Luke 19, 41, and when he was come near, he beheld the city and wept over it. Do we stop and think enough outside of ourselves to think of others? I think often we do not. We do not. We're so self Obsessed, so preoccupied with our own little world that we miss what is going on for others. What is going on? Do we stop to see others' pain? Will we shed tears for them? As Christ would. Tears of love, tears of compassion, tears of care, of faith. Joel says that the only way to return to God is with our hearts to be Rent with weeping. How do we treat others? Do we love others like Jesus would and does? Do we love them? Do we forgive others like our Lord Jesus forgives? In grace, do we give grace to others like our Lord does? Do we build up others like our Lord does? When we face strife, we must exercise grace and forgiveness. Have you ever been under attack? Show grace. Show grace. And I, I've had some attacks of very recent times. And sometimes it goes against the grain to show grace, to extend grace to those who you feel like just reacting like for like, don't you? Fight fire with fire. But instead, give them love. Give them love. Show grace. Develop the mind of Christ that He might be evident in how you live, in how you respond, in how you act and react. That it's Christ in you. It's being like Him. It's being like Him. And to have that sensitivity to others, that composure under pressure, that you don't blow your stack, but you start to think, what would Jesus do? What would Jesus do? We know sometimes that's a glib phrase that it's just some token tokenistic thing, but truly and really, what would Jesus do? When you face the situations of life, when you face the tests of time, would he react in anger and frustration and lash out? Or would he respond in sensitivity and composure and tenderness? Do you place yourself in another's shoes? Place yourself in their skin? See things from where they're at? And be like Jesus would be. In Acts 11, verse 23, Barnabas exhorted them all that with purpose of heart they would cleave unto the Lord. So they would cling unto Him. They would cleave unto Him. How we ought to want to cling unto Jesus today. Cling unto the Lord Jesus. To hold Him fast. To cleave unto Him. To hold Him tight. To hug Him. To hold Him. To be with Him. To know Him. To love Him. To be like Him. Do you love Him? He says, if you love me, obey my commandments. He says, um, love others even as I have loved you. That's something big, isn't it? That's something beyond human love. The question for anyone here today, and I'm not assuming this, that this is true of you, that you love Christ today. You might think you're religious, you love singing songs or opening a Bible or doing religious things, but you may not yet know Him. You may not yet love Him. You may not yet personally have trusted Him for your saving from sin, from hell, 
from damnation. Friends, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 16, 22, If any man love not the Lord Jesus Christ, let him be anathema. Maranatha, which means our Lord come, is coming. He says that if anyone love not the Lord Jesus Christ, let him be anathema. It means cursed. If you don't love the Lord Jesus Christ, you're cursed. Mm -hmm. And you're hell bound today. But thank God the good news is, Jesus, our Lord, bore the curse of our sin. He bore the penalty of it on the cross. He took that curse away. If you'll trust Him, friends, I urge you today to trust Him. And to recognise that it's not of our works, it's not of anything that we can do, as someone put it, it's not about what I can do, but what He has already done. It's about what He has already done. And it's when we come to that place, we realise our weakness, we realise our lack, we realise uh, our absolute need of Him, and we come unto Him. And we realise, as He saves us and recreates life in us, that we are His workmanship, and He's created us to be like Him, to serve Him, to be unto good works. And lastly, just think of it to be like Him, what that really means. To be like Him. To be like Him. What does it mean? It means that ultimately we'll follow Him all the way to the cross. It means ultimately we'll tread with Him the very pathway of the cross to become conformed unto His death. As a Christian it means you'll die to self. <clears throat> Sounds painful, doesn't it? There's pains in battle, but the victory is won through the battle. There's pains in giving birth, but what a blessing afterwards. And there's pains sometimes in the Christian life. We sometimes face pains and testing times, but it's going to be worth it. It's going to be worth it. The way of the cross is worth it. Because He calls us to sometimes go through those shadow times, those dark valleys. Friends, Paul writes, I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord. He says, I've suffered the loss of all things and do count the but done, that I may win Christ and be found in Him, not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ. The righteousness which is of God by faith. And he goes on to know him, to be made conformable to his death. Lastly, let me quote this poem. I picked this up of late and it's a telling message here. Listen to these words. Who will be their Jesus? Who will guide like Jesus? The man who's lost his way, who will search like Jesus? The woman gone astray, who will hug like Jesus? The one confirmed with AIDS, who will feed like Jesus? The child whose hope now fades, who will pray like Jesus? For friends who struggle hard, who will love like Jesus? The outcast life has scarred, who will weep like Jesus? For pain in others' eyes, who will speak like Jesus, warning of Satan's lies? Who will pause their judging just long enough to serve? Who will touch the leper? Does someone have the nerve? Will you be there, Jesus? To those who come your way, will you offer kindness and Christ to them display? Who will be there, Jesus? Friends, you're the ones. You are His workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works. And He that saith He abideth in Him ought Himself so to walk even as He walked. To be Christ-like, to be like Him.